Hey now, what is going on YouTube? Modsville USA here, back with another video. And uh, today we got something a little different, and this is a video that uh, I feel is important as it appears to be missing from YouTube. Now you will find many uh, PS2 laser swap guides out there on the internet or how to restore your laser, uh, how to swap it. But no one really seems to go over the different variations of lasers. Now these are for fat models. There's one more in here that's missing that looks similar to this one. And if, say, you buy a new laser on eBay or Amazon or something for a couple bucks, they're very, very cheap, like five, ten bucks, something like that is a going rate. So you buy one, it's probably going to be one of these guys. This is the... 400C, these are the most common replacement laser that you're going to find out there. Let's say you tear open your PS2, and you find that you've got one of these guys here, one of these HD7 lasers. Uh, these, you don't really see these being uh, manufactured anymore, and when you do, they're significantly more expensive. So let's say you've got one of these guys in there. You swap in one of these guys, uh, you're probably going to boot up PS1 games or CD-based games just fine, but DVDs are still not going to read. And, you know, you might watch a video and it tells you to spin that little white dial and nothing happens and you get frustrated. And you move on with your life. Well, that's because your EEPROM in your PS2 has the data that it's using this laser. So when you put this in there, it thinks it's this one. It's different and it's just simply not going to work. So we're going to be going over, for the most part, um, not going to get into too detail about the physical teardowns of all the different PS2 models. Uh, I think you can handle that. You can do all of that. I'm just, this is going to go over the software, the homebrew software that we need to run in order to switch from one laser to another laser. So you can buy this guy and not have to worry about what lasers in your console or what your console needs. Uh, you can just put this one in there and call it a day. Now with Slims, it's much less likely that it's going to matter. So here's uh, a Slim disk drive assembly. And about, I'd say about 95% of Slims that you're going to find are going to have this laser in it. However, now here's a PS2 Slim that I found recently at the flea market, a little dirty, haven't done any work to it, it works perfectly fine. This is a custom shell from a brand named XCM Crystal, and I assume that this is a V12 in here, because if we pop it open, just testing to see if there's a mysterious mod chip I didn't know about, that is a very different laser, it's very squarish very strange and uh yeah so this laser right here it's very uncommon i've only seen it in early slim revisions but if this goes bad you're not going to be able to replace it with the very common and readily available one of these without running the software that we are going to run okay so i've gone ahead and taken this apart already and as you can see, if we get in here, now this laser here doesn't have the yellow circle around it. So that tells me that this is a 400B. Now we've got a replacement laser here. Odds are they probably sent me a 400C. So here we go. Let's take a look. And yes, that is a 400C. It's got the yellow ring around it so without homebrew software we would just be shit out of luck as if we put this one in here it's probably not going to work however we're going to use an application to force the ps2 into thinking that it's supposed to have one of these guys anyway so let's go ahead and swap this in go over a couple little little details here one the first thing you're going to want to check is right here some ps2 
aftermarket lasers do not come uh, with this screw in here and you're gonna you're gonna need that so if that is missing you're going to need a very small torque screwdriver in order to swap I believe that's a t8 maybe even smaller um, but luckily ours came with one um, we will however need to swap out uh, the plastic piece here that keeps it in and also you're going to want to check right here there's a little solder bead now pretty much all the same um, same stuff applies for a slim laser except for this guy right here we're still going to need to swap over this guy on the slim as well as desolder this uh, so I'll show you show you what I'm talking about there in a second but let's get this guy out first we're just going to remove this one screw and this guy can come out like this I'm going to use the screwdriver, loosen that up, so we're going to take this guy, this goes here, okay, so with the new laser we don't want it touching anything goofy on the desk, okay, so we got the guide rail there, I'm going to swap this guy over, this one Phillips head screw, Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to take our soldering iron. It's one quick motion to desolder that bead there. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole uh, process for a slim laser. I will show you. I've got a slim laser right here. Let's see if it still has the bead on it. It does not. But the Slim Laser, the anti-static solder bead, it's going to be right there. Same thing, uh, put in the guide rail, um, whatever you want to call this piece here. There's one for the, for the Slim, which would be this guy. And for these, uh, typically what I do... I just remove this one up top, tss, 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 the screw and this piece, and then this one I loosen it. And then if you have the laser here, you just kind of pull the guide rail out, slip it out, swap a new one in, and put it down. Now really, um, also before I forget too, the software is not compatible with a 9000 uh, PS2 model. Um, however, you're only really going to get that other laser variation and really early slim models anyway so for the most part all slims use this laser except the very very rare situation where it's got that blocky looking one that's the only event you're gonna want to use this software on the slim okay now on to the software side of things you're going to need a way to launch uh you launch elf so i've got a cop a free mcboot memory card right here you can get these for dirt cheap on eBay if you don't feel like making one yourself. I would just go that route personally. It's like five, I'd rather spend a couple bucks than having to uh, buy 007 and do all the shit to initially set it up. Or alternatively, you can use free DVD boot if you're on a slim PS2. I've got a video on free DVD boot only support slims currently and you're also going to need a USB drive to copy the lens changer software that we're getting into and it's going to need to be uh, FAT32 so let's head on over to the computer okay so here we are on the PC I got my USB drive plugged in I'm going to go properties and 
confirm that it's FAT32. So if you've got a 32 gig or lower flash drive, it will be FAT32 by default, unless you formatted it another format for some reason. If it's a larger one, you're going to need to format it FAT32. Look into guiformat.exe. Um, it's just a free program. Just give it a run, format it FAT32, and come on back here. I don't feel like going through all that. I've done it a million times, but you can just look up GUI format uh, .exe, find a video for that. If you need to format FAT32. So here we are on the root of my flash drive now. We're gonna come on over here to this PSX place um, link right here got a program called PS2 Lens Changer. We're going to click download now. Now this is a very, very old program. I think last updated in 2006. Now it's all in Spanish. All right, so we're opening it up. Boom. Read me. Google Translate. Okay. Okay, so with the software here, we've, on the right-hand side, I've got my got the zip file for the lens changer program. And on the left, we've got the USB drive. So in the USB drive, I'm going to make a new folder called lens changer. You can name it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. And then from here, we're going to go to boot. Get the boot.elf. I'm going to drag it over here. Now I found that this one here works on fat, but I couldn't get it to boot on a slim. And pretty much all this thing does, it just takes more time. It'll have an initial boot screen that'll have you choose uh, which exploit you want, which is super outdated. It's got like swap magic and uh, all sorts of options that no one uses anymore. Uh, best way to do it is the boot.elf. Just run that. And you'll get straight into the program. So you're going to want to boot up ulaunchelf using whatever method you desire. Hit circle. Go to mass, which is your USB drive. And then go ahead, go to lens changer. Little folder we created. Hit circle, circle on boot.elf. Once it boots, if you're on a fat, you're going to get a screen like this. It should properly detect your model. Now I hit the wrong button, so it's L1 to back up your EEPROM. I'd recommend doing that uh, just in case something gets fishy. Then later you can come in and hit R1 to restore it. And from here, all you got to do is choose the laser uh, that you've installed in the console and uh, hit start I believe or hit X it's X my bad so we've got that one that in there right now we've got the 400 C got all the options there all the crap the HD 7 the, the R which looks similar to the HD 7 but we're going to choose that guy. So you hit X and then reprogram, push start. And there you go. Now if you're on a slim, it's going to look a little something like this. You're only going to have two options. And once again, you're only going to use this if you're switching from the fat laser to the more common laser. So here we are with a mod chip uh, PS2 Slim. Now this software does not work if you have a mod chip installed in your console, unfortunately. Uh, but if you have a mod bow or any kind of the Infinity mod chips, if you hold start on boot up, it will disable your mod chip. So what we're going to do right now, push power, hold start at the matrix menu, and you get this nice disabled screen, 
and go ahead and reset and try running the program. Now, unfortunately, if that doesn't work, um, the next best bet is to tear the console down and remove the power wire. You don't need to uninstall the mod chip at all. Just come on in here and uninstall the power wire. Um, you don't need to desolder it. Desolder it on both ends. I want to insulate the wire. Just pay mind to where it's soldered to on the board. Remove the wire. And... Um, boot up the console and try running the software it's not an issue um, with having the mod chip itself like once you've run it you're good it just does not work properly if you have a mod chip installed and that's it dudes that's how you swap from one type of laser to the other hope you enjoyed the video Modsville USA signing out